Hey everybody, it's me, Will with Fingerdew. I know I'm a little close. I hope it's not scary, uh, but I got an e well a message on on YouTube from uh, Jeffrey Shore who asked me if I would do a video on how I do my nose contour, which I thought was very flattering because I have to tell you, nose contour is one of the hardest things for me. Uh, it was it took me forever to get it down and. Uh, I watched a lot of other people do tutorials on the fact, and I have to say that the best tutorial that I saw was Trixie Mattel. Somebody had said to me, you should watch a Trixie Mattel tutorial because she paints so large that you can see technically what she's doing. And then when you apply it to your own face and you do it smaller, uh, it, it, it'll it make sense. And, and I have to say it's true. So. What I do is, where I'm at right now is I'm kind of halfway through my contour. I've done my cheeks, I've cut my cheek, everything's still wet. I haven't said anything with powder yet. Uh, and so what I normally do is I put all my foundation on. I use a darker foundation on the outside and low and then a, a lighter one in the middle. And then I do uh, my contour. I use a Juvia's Place uh, shade stick and I use the um, color uh, Katsina. Uh, it doesn't have a number, it's just Katsina. And it's a very, very dark contour, but it buffs out not too bad. Uh, now keep in mind, once I put powder over this, it'll go even lighter. So then what I like to do is, uh, there are two excellent brushes that Jessup makes. There's the, um, the 322, which is a very, very broad angled brush. As you can see, it's longer. And then this one here is the 312, and it's a lot narrower. If you see the two of them side by side, you can see that they're both just very different. Now, I love to use the 322, is that right? Yeah, I, I love to use the 322, the longer of the two, for my eyebrows. But this is also good for nose contour because it's a long brush. The nice thing about a long brush like that is that you can kind of get through the surface quicker. Whereas with the smaller brush, this is the 312. I never know the numbers of the brushes. I just know the shapes. And angled brushes are the best for especially contour, for wet contour. But I use the narrower one now, but I have to tell you that this longer one was the one that I, I started with to help me get this. So I'm gonna use the longer one, the 322 from Jessup. And the only reason I use Jessup brushes is I was talking to um, Teresa Mulhern, who is a makeup reviewer, and uh, I'm going to call her uh, a beauty blogger on YouTube. Uh, I asked her what her favorite brushes are, and she said Jessup. So what I do is I just take this literally and drag it across the top. I'm not being special. And then what I like to do is I do like to kind of wipe off a bit. You don't need a lot of product on this brush. And then the trick is to go down your nose. Now, I used to be so afraid of doing this. Everyone said, oh, you got to, mm. and I, I used to, mm. and so the trick is really to just not have any fear, just commit to the curve and go for it. Uh, and the best way to start is in your nose here, you have a pinched area that, excuse my dirty, dirty fingernails. I'm so embarrassed by myself, but I've been doing a lot of makeup lately and they're starting to get gritty. But this area of your nose, just, just at the bridge, um, there's a pinched area. You want to go use that as your widest point and go in from there. Uh, that's, that's just the only advice I can give. So I start with a mark. I just do the mark. And then I go down my nose towards the tip on an angle. And I go right past the tip of my nose. And then there should be enough product on this to do the same thing on the other side. And again, I do that mark so I can see that there's not. So I'm just going to, again, I'm just grabbing a little bit of product and then I'm wiping it on the edge of the tube. And again, I'm just going to start there. And you want to try and keep this as symmetrical as possible. It's not possible. It, it gets very hard, uh, but you get better at it. And practice makes all the difference in the world. And then, if you can do this with your other hand, it helps because then you can really see what's going on. And you want to kind of come down your nose 
almost meeting the other line at the bottom. That's it. I mean, it looks crazy. Trust me, I know it looks crazy. Uh, and then what you want to do is, without putting any more product on the brush, you're going to go in and grab that, like just put the brush right at the edge of where you've drawn that line and, and pull it away. Do you see how I'm making that longer? And this is really the part that makes a big difference, I find anyway. A lot of people used to do nose contour right down the sides of their nose. And then they end up with this big brown nose and it looked crazy. So what, you, what we're trying to do now is kind of create those lines that the light gives us by just literally going in on that edge, getting the brush flat on our nose and just pulling it down. And if you see, I'm not really doing anything too, too aggressive. I'm also correcting this line. Like sometimes, you know, you're gonna go down this line awkwardly there it's it's three-dimensional there's bumps and and especially the older you get your nose gets lumpier i hate to tell you i'm just saying right now brace yourself one day you're going to wake up with a pickle nose and you're just going to freak out i'm still freaking out i hate my pickle nose uh and so then i'm literally just pulling that away now what happens is as i pull that away it actually fades into the wet foundation that i have on my nose you can see, you can still see where it's pulling down, but it's not as dark. Do you know what I mean? We're fading this product out. And because we're using the flatness of the brush, you use one side on one and then you turn the rest. So you're not really adding more product anywhere, but you are literally just pulling this product down. Now, I use Juvia's Place because I love Juvia's Place. You can use any shade stick. You can use concealer if it's dark enough. It has to be dark enough. And the darkness of this depends on you, what you're comfortable with, what you work with. Then the trick with doing your nose is getting getting the lines into your, because we're creating a new eye socket. I've said this to my drag daughters. I've said this to other people who've asked me, but the best way to get used to how to draw on new face contours is to look at artwork, paintings. I particularly like um, Leonardo da Vinci's faces, studies of faces, because he he's creating shapes on a flat surface. Remember this. He's putting in shadows and arches and creating uh, darks and lights. And you get used to how to paint a face on yourself. You also get used to the bone structure of a face, like how it's supposed to look. And one of the things that I like, we have this orbital socket for our eye and this, this bone and everything that's right here. We're trying to put that up higher. And on one side, we're gonna get our shadow creating our new uh, crease up higher, but we also need to kind of create the, the shade of our bone. So I bring this, now that we've kind of faded it, I like to bring this into my eyebrow, like my actual eyebrow to create that pocket here. And then again, I'm moving the brush onto the other side onto, and using whatever products there. I don't want a lot of product because I can build this up. And also it's easier, everything's wet. As I said, all my foundation, everything is wet, nothing's set. So the benefit of that is you can wipe stuff off if it's wrong. And I like to just make sure I don't like to go in too far either because we're going to use um, found, uh, eyeshadow and stuff like that here. But then, and I just tap it. I don't, I don't need to be a hero and do it all in one go. Sometimes I find tapping. My problem is if I go in one go, it'll, I end up with a nose that's over here. It's terrible. So what I'm doing now is I'm just reinforcing this area, the bridge area of my nose because this is where I really want the bone structure to be defined. And if you watch, I'm not being particularly perfect with this. I just want to get this deepness in here because this is, again, when you look at a face, this is where the, the shadows hit. When you think of a light hitting, these are the recesses. 
and we want these to fade in. But I'm not gonna go too far in because I'm gonna be adding primer and then shadow, but I, I also want to see a de definite area where I stop my eyeshadow. I don't want my shadow to go any further than this. And then once I kind of get it to where I like it, I also like to make sure that this line down the, the either side of my nose is good. Like good and solid. I don't want it to be too too dark, but I also don't want it to be undiscernible. I also keep a paper towel, a, 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 a makeup towel, anything with a bit of a rough surface. And I like to scrape off the product on that. And then I can come in with not a clean brush, but a brush with not a lot of product on it. And then I can manipulate the product that's on my face. And as you can see, I'm just bringing all of this in and fading it out. I don't need it to be too dark. And always make sure that your brush is angled where the, the top, like it's angled like this, the tallest part you want at the top and the narrowest part is in the direction you're going. Uh, then you'll never fight the bristles. Otherwise, if you kind of try and go down your face with the longer part first, it'll skip and pop and that's where you can run into trouble. And I'm constantly having to look at my brush and go, which, how, how do I have it? Because I don't, I don't know. I'm not paying attention. I'm very busy. I'm very famous. I've got things to do. And then once you get all of this, do you see how, like you can see quite a dark line down my nose. I feel like this side's a little darker. I'm just going to pull it out further. Also, as your brush kind of drags it into your foundation, it picks up that foundation and you bring that lightness up into it and it starts to fade. You can see it's already starting to uh, fade out a bit. I don't know what that is there. We'll just take it away. Uh, but then what I like to do then is take my finger, instead of a beauty blender, because I can control my finger. I feel like a beauty blender is harder to control. But um, with most beauty blenders, the, the arc is fine. You, you get that ball shape and you can literally start to kind of buff that out. But I, I like to use my finger so I can kind of get right in there. I'm not pushing, I'm, I'm, I'm tapping. And I'm trying to pick up the product on my hand and move it all around. I don't know if that makes a big difference to you, uh, if you can see a big difference there. But um, so that's, that's how I do it. And I just bring it, you know, just down my nose. Also, this line down the middle isn't straight. It's not perfect. And that's fine. We're going to correct that. The other thing I like to do is just take one last little bit of product on my brush and just because we've done this line there's there's a point where our nose kind of curves under and I like to take this and just do that and I bring it up on either side just a bit and then just there's there, you, you get used to this on your face this might stop lower you can stop it higher. The higher you stop it, the more upturned your nose is going to look. But if you have a big nose, that upturn, you'll end up still with like this dark area underneath and it can look weird. Uh, I also then like to take this just above there and very lightly put a line. It's just so I can get that button nose. <laughs> it's so sad. Uh, and then what I do is I take another um juvia's place shade stick this one's aberdeen this is i think their second lightest i bought it because i'm scottish heritage and i thought aberdeen perfect that'll work for me uh now with this one i will use the 312 the smaller brush uh, and what i like to do first of all is just with the longest part just at the longest tip i just get a little bit of product on that and again, I'm holding the brush squared off to my nose. I want to create a ball at the end of my nose. So I'm just going to tap a circular shape. Some people do like a swipe where they'll just go straight across and they create, they go one side and then the other and they create this shape. But I like to do that. And then I go back in with the brush. And again, I'm just tapping on the uh, product and wiping it on the edge of the tube. And now here's where I'll straighten out the, these lines on the inside. I just come down. And again, you don't have to do this in one go. You can 
tap this take your time one tap at a time make sure you you place the brush exactly where you want it to be and you will get that straighter I hope that that looks all right to you again this will look crazy until you're done powdering and everything it, it does look crazy I this is one of the things that I had a problem with was I was constantly thinking well that doesn't look very good I'm going back in with this brush again just to define these lines I just want them I'm being fussy but your nose is right in the middle of your face even without noticing everyone looks here they're talking to your eyes but they still see your nose and if your nose is weird they'll notice now what I normally do at this point is I'll do my eyebrows and then I powder everything and then I do all my eyeshadow and then I go back in with powder after. I also go in with um, concealer. Normally I use Juvia's Place, but somebody gave me this, uh, uh, I don't even know who makes it. Revlon, this uh, instant face uh, age rewind. Uh, it's a concealer. It's just a concealer. It's kind of weird. It's kind of gross because it's got this sponge applicator and then you you turn that and it puts the product into this. I think it's disgusting. But at the same time, this is really a great product. Now, again, I would be doing this later because when I'm painting my eyes, I don't want any fallout to contaminate my cheeks. So what ends up happening is if there is any fallout, I, I put a powder down to protect, I wipe it all away. But then I do this last and then I use this to correct my under eye, uh, my shadow going up. I can then go in with um, my eyeliner and everything and then do my under eye and it's clean. But just for the sake of this, I'm going to do this now. So I, now, do you see how bright that is? That's very light compared to my face. So I'm going to put this under the eye and down the cheek a little. I'm also bringing it just in beside that contour. Do it on the other side. Tapping it. I don't know why this is so good, but it is. As I say, I normally use the Juvia's Place. You can also take this and kind of put it on your hand and get some product. And if you want, then you can take your 312 again and pick up some of that product off your hand and then put it on here so that the colors match your your cheek area because you can end up with different shades everywhere and it can be quite quite odd what i like to do with this down the center of the nose is i like to try and get this right down the center of the nose i don't want this really too close to either side of the contour because i like to really kind of highlight that center line do you see i don't know if you can tell uh, and then I'll just tap that on the nose just to oop, just to bring it out. Uh, and again, if you make a mistake, sorry, I hit the mic. You just take your, this is the 322. It still has product on it. And again, I don't need a lot. I just, I'm just going to tap it back just so we, we're just going to correct. We just want to make sure that whatever we're doing is, uh, good now a lot of people will do this as well here into this area i like to do this up a little higher i'll actually use the applicator now um because they called that the martini glass and it can be kind of weird if you want a very young face bring that down because you want like that smooth eyebrow area that's that's a very youthful feature um so it's just, I, that's just my advice to you. Now, I'm taking a sponge, a beauty blender that has a flat area, and I'm going to tap this. And again, pretending like there's eyeshadow on the face, this is how I would clean up my eyeshadow, is I bring this out, snatch up this cheek line, get right under the eye, get right into the corner. Make sure you're blending it. I don't want it to go down my cheek because I want the top of my cheek bright, but this, and then the last part is I try and bring this up the nose into this contour. And 
you should be able to see that it's starting to take that brown away from the edge, the, like from the side of the nose. I want it up here, but I don't want it down the side of my nose. And so I don't know if you can see the difference. That's the side I've blended. That's the side I haven't blended. Do you see how much brown there is right here? And over here, it's kind of gone. And when you lighten this area, the light will hit all this and kind of wash it all out. And to the human eye looking, it, it sees it all as one, one piece of skin, face, you know what I mean? They don't see the different layers that you're putting on. And then, this is the other side again. I'm just getting that edge of that sponge and trying to come up the side of my nose all in one go, almost right up to that line. And that's it. And then we're going to, again with this, I like to just try and try to make it look like there's a light hitting my face right here. I just want that to be the brightest. On my lip at the top, center of my chin as well. I just like to bring that light down there. So that's basically all of that. I'm just going to throw on some eyebrows now. I'll show you how I do my eyebrows because why not? We're here. Let's do it. Um, this is the wider. This is the 322 Jessup brush. Uh, again, I'm just taking it and rubbing it into like across the top of the stick and then removing any excess on the side of the tube. And then this, where this line is, Ben de la Creme does the best eyebrow, period. Period. Her eyebrows are gorgeous. And her eyebrow literally comes off of this nose contour up into an arc and over. Then there are eyebrows like Scarlet Envies, which I love, which are more of an, a natural line, which is she'll have this flat line here that then comes up in arches. I like to do something in the middle. So what I do is on the inside of the eyebrow, I start back here, like just over the pupil. And I will just come up. And then I like to go straight over. I don't know why. I don't know why. But then from this area where the eyebrow comes, that's where I try and imagine this line going up from there. Let me try. And, I don't think I have enough product here. I like this line to come up from there. That's better. And then right at the height of it, I'll bring this back down to meet the eyebrow line that I've created underneath. Now, I do like to make sure that there's a bit of a point there. So you have to finesse it. And then I take the, the brush. Literally, my eyebrow is as wide as this brush. Uh, everybody's eyebrow is different, how they like their eyebrow. But do you see how now I can literally take this brush and just in between those lines right here. And then I fill this all in. And again, this is just the template. We're going to be putting these eyebrows on with powder later. And we're also going to be contouring the nose with powder later, but I'm going to show you that earlier. So there's more or less the eyebrow. You want it to come in as far as your inner corner eye. But what I like to do is I like to fade it out. I don't like it to be too harsh. An ombre eye, I think, is what they like to call that. I just call it artistic. And so again, we're going to do this again. So just from just above where the pupil is. Also, my eyebrows, my real eyebrows, one's a little lower than the other because I sleep on this side of my face. So I just have to always be a little careful. But I like to do this just over the pupil. Up. And then almost straight out like that and then kind of making kind of visually like doing a connection to this without actually connecting the eye socket that I've created I then bring this one up to a point and this is where the arch comes from the arch in my eyebrow more or less comes from 
the upper line and then I just literally go in between the lines with my brush it's perfect and and then I like to ombre this out tap this out as much as I can but I also like to bring this down into this contour a little I like I don't know that's just how I like my eyebrows I don't know as I say I really I really like Bende la Creme's eyebrows for years I used to try and do mine just like hers and it it was hard I know I, I never got the hang of it but it I I kind of developed my eyebrow from that I also really really like Scarlet Envy's eyebrows and they're very similar to Mila Kunis's and for a while I would say to people Mila Kunis was my eyebrow model I really liked her eyebrows and then when Candy Muse was on Drag Race I was doing a very square Candy Muse brow that was very um, apparently it's very popular in Korean makeup or it was at the time I don't know if it still is but like a very blocked eyebrow and then the point at the end I quite like that so yeah so that's uh That's the eyebrow, more or less. Make sure my, I get that point up there. I like that point. It makes me look like I'm thinking. <laughs> so yeah, so that's more or less the eyebrow. And again, this is just... the template. We're going to do this better later. And then, oh, I just use Cody Airspun. This is the extra translucent. The reason I like the extra translucent is it's got a pink tone to it. So I just feel like it keeps me from looking too stark. I find a lot of, a lot of uh, powders and stuff like that can make a face look very white and bleached out. And I don't like that. So what I'm doing now is I'm tapping this over my eyebrows because I don't want to disturb that. I'm not, I'm not going, I'm not rubbing, I'm not, I'm just literally down on top of it. And then I can be a little more loosey-goosey with up here. But this is how you beat a mug. And then again, load this up and then quite literally tapping this right down on the nose. You don't want to disturb any of this. You want this to be as you painted it you don't want to have to all of a sudden realize you've smudged it out same with this under cheek line here you want that to be as pristine as possible the rest is fine you're going to be covering all that with blush and stuff and then your cheek line or chin line <laughs> the long cheek and yeah so now Now, this is just typical translucent powder. Normally, what I would use on the eyes with that highlighter, contour, or concealer, the Age Rewind, or whatever concealer you use on your, on your cheek line, um, I would use a finer powder, like um, Elf has, I'll show you, I've got a couple of good powders here. Uh, Elf makes a, a high definition powder. It's just the reason it's hydro, uh, high definition is that it's um, uh, finely milled. It's just a thinner, finer powder. And what it does is it really helps settle the makeup into any uh, pores and stuff that you have. I also have um, from ColourPop, they have a setting powder. I got two from them. One was soft pink and one was peach. And I use these below just they're not as bright as the cheek area and it, it still brightens and, and sets everything. But I like that one down on my cheek line just to kind of put a color there and not have it be as stark as the rest of my face. Um, Juvia's Place came out with a face powder and it's excellent. I have no problem with this. I have the white sand one because, well, I'm, I'm pale as pale. Also, Beauty Bakery has a fantastic finely milled powder. It's great under your eyes as well. And this one's just flour and... Uh, it's really good. It's a translucent. And then if you're using a lot of white, uh, I have Ben Nye Super White, and this is very finely milled. 
any of these are good under the eyes uh, to help you uh, set all of that. But I'm just using this today because we're not there yet. But what I like to do now is bring this powder into this area and up the side of the nose a bit. And as you can see, I'm pinching my puff. That sounds rude. So that I'm getting like a flat surface going up the side of my nose. And I'm just putting that all in there. And then what I like to do is take my contour palette from NYX. This is an excellent palette. It's got all the colors. I use um, this color. I don't know what it's called. They don't seem to have a name for it either. Oh, they do. I can't read that. But anyway, this one here, it's not as warm. And this one I find a little chalky, but this one's got some depth to it. And then I take, these are from BH Cosmetic. These are fan brushes. They've discontinued them. I don't think you can get them anymore. If they have them on their site, they're in the sale section. These are excellent. Fan brushes are excellent for nose contour. Angled brushes, fan brushes. But what I like to do with this, again, with all that powder there, is then I like to come in and I'm literally putting this on the edge and just w wiggling it. I'm not going too heavy, but I'm just trying to set this line with the powder. I don't know if you can see that, but literally I'm putting the product on the very edge of the brush and then literally just as I get more on, then I like to kind of try and drag it into the powder that's down the side of my nose because that powder will help this from going too far. But as you can see, I didn't put a lot of product on that. And I would normally be doing this part after I've done my eyes and everything so I can kind of marry my contour into my eyeshadow. Because right in this area here, depending on where you put your, your crease and draw in your eye, is where you want to then kind of get this in with the shadow so it marries. And then, again, with the fan, I will... I will try and just kind of give this that pop and come down, come right down the nose. You want this as shadowed as possible so it doesn't really catch the light. And then again, if you're ambidextrous, go for it. If you're not, holding your brush like this on this side really helps because otherwise you're really kind of contorting your wrist and everything around. And and do, do you get... Do you understand this will take you a while to get used to um i this is why i like to do it with my other hand uh because a i can see it sometimes like sometimes the brush is right in front of your eye and you can't really see what you're doing so you have to kind of close one eye and look at the other but yeah if you can get your hand used to making these small little motions get your uh, left hand to do them as well as your right or however whether you're left-handed left -handed or right-handed, uh, it really does help you with the control. And again, I'm trying to drag this down the nose a little, but not too far. And that's more or less it. Um, you know, you can, I'll take like a little fluffy blender brush and, you know, get some of this uh, powder out from here. And then when I'm done, I like to take um, like a, a highlighter or whatever I'm using on my cheeks. I'll, I'll do a little on the end of my nose, just a little halfway up. You don't want your, your whole nose shiny and you don't want it all the way down because it makes your nose look longer. It can be weird. But just here, just below where your eyebrow ridge is, is a good spot. And then you can put a bit of highlight up here. So I like to use pressed highlighters, although Juvia's Place makes some excellent loose. There's nothing wrong with it. I just find there's more control with the loose. Um, Elf does a baked highlighter that is really, really quite nice. 
you know, it's it's very bright. And then this is ColourPop's Super Shock formula. Uh, it's it's kind of like a cream. It's very different. This is the ColourPop. This is the Elf. Uh, and I just find with the uh, with the ColourPop one because it's creamier. It, it's a little easier to control. So what I'll do is with the brush that I, I used for the lighter uh, concealer, the 312, uh, I wiped off the, that and I'll just take like a little bit of the ColourPop Super Shock. This one is uh, Flexitarian. <laughs> but so I'm just going to go right. Oh, let me just um, just want to make sure that I got all the powder off, all the setting powder, too. You can take like a big brush. Where's my big brush? Here it is. <laughs> you can take a big brush and literally just, and very lightly, don't, don't, um, you don't want to rub your face, but you just want to kind of get a lot of those powders out of the way. And then I just pick up a little bit of uh, the Super Shock on a brush and I will tap this on the edge. Do you see how bright that makes it? And then again, just up here, You see how it just puts that little bit of light right there and you'll you'll get used to how much of that you want on and that's it that's more or less it the last thing i like to do is i'll take my blush and uh, as i'm doing my blush i will uh, do the tip of my nose now this is my blush brush there's blush on it right now from yesterday so i'm just gonna let see let you see this just like to put that there just underneath it's just going underneath you can put it also on this arc you can also have it kind of come across your nose and give you that that um like i've been out in the cold thing i don't like that i, I mean for me anyway i i find that makes my nose look dirty so i mean i have done it for you to show you but i prefer just to do uh the tip of the nose and then this is my powder brush, so I'm just brushing all the powder that's on it into that. And you see how it takes that all away? And then I'll take my 312. It's really just got the highlighter on it now. And I will just brighten up the middle of that so it's not so... And that's how I do my nose contour. I want to thank Jeffrey Sir for asking and I want to just say it really was a compliment for him to comment and say, I really like your nose contour. How do you do it? Because as I said, it took me a while to get to here. I'm still not particularly happy with it, but I don't hate the way it looks. I used to really hate doing, I used to not even bother contouring my nose and it was just, that's a whole other kettle of problems right there. So uh, my suggestion is to you, find a tutorial that you like. And I suggest using a tutorial of somebody with a similar shaped face as you. Ginger Minge does excellent tutorials. If you have a round face, I love hers. Trixie Mattel's are excellent. Uh, Scarlett did one with, I think, Wow Plus, or it might have been Revlon. I'm going to put the link to that down below. The Ginger one is down below. The Trixie one is down below. Do have a look at theirs. Uh, they're how I learned to do them. Uh, and uh, if you ever come across a tutorial that you think is excellent shoot it to me let me see it i want to know what's going on but um other than that uh, i always say less is more <laughs> especially where brown and contour and your nose is concerned because you don't want a big brown splotch in the middle of your face unless of course that's what you're going for and then i'm not judging i'm just saying so there it is. That's uh, the nose contour a la Wilma Fingerdew. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what the hell is wrong with you? Subscribe already. It's free. And if you'd like to support this channel and the work I'm doing, uh, then the links to become a Tipperdew, a Redbubble model, or to join the Fingerdew family on Patreon are all down below in the description box. And until next time, miss me. Mwah. Seriously. Not a bad nose, didn't cost me anything. <laughs>